Uh, my name is Kevin Jones. Uh, I'm a sales engineer at Nginx. Um, I've been working for Nginx for th three months. Um, I'm familiar with Nginx. Previous, previous to working at Nginx, I worked at Yellow Pages um, in an uh, operations team for um, their uh, SRE team. So I have some experience with web ops and uh, doing some um, automation. And uh, we had 6,000 servers, uh, two data centers, and about three, 300 plus virtual servers that we ran. Um, so that being said, uh, something that big, uh, I love automating stuff, right? Um, anytime that I can automate something so that the next time that I want to do it, I don't have to, is, is uh, uh, to me, that's, that's the best approach, right? So uh, I enjoy, enjoy music and meeting new people. So any of you want to you know, come up, say hi to me, feel free to come say hi. So uh, we're going to go over a couple things. I'm going to give you a quick intro on what Ansible is, um, a little bit about uh, my configuration uh, and how I'm deploying uh, with Ansible. Um, my, my deploy is, is really to kind of uh, focus on some of the key features of Ansible and how you might be able to use it in, in your, your stack at, at your company. Uh, then I'm actually going to run the demo, and uh, then I'm going to give you some, some slides on uh, where you can go to get help uh, if you do have questions about Nginx Plus or Ansible. So in a, in a world where we have so many moving parts in our data centers and uh, you know, on the cloud and you, know, you have all this stuff going on, you know, how do you automate stuff and, and make things work well? So that's where uh, Ansible and Nginx uh, kind of play a really, really good role together. Uh, Ansible, so basically Ansible, this is the definition according to Ansible, uh, uh, the company. Ansible is a radically simple IT automation engine that automates cloud provisioning, configuration management, application deployment, infra intro service orchestration, and many other IT needs. So essentially, anything you can do uh, that a sysadmin can do typically can be done with Ansible. Um, some of the features of Ansible uh, uses modules, um, and the modules can be written in any language that basically return JSON. Uh, there's tons of modules that just come in the open source uh, version of, of uh, Ansible that you can use to accomplish a lot of tasks. Uh, the configuration files are YAML based, which are very easy to read. Um, you know, you don't really have to focus too hard. You just can kind of get a real quick, uh, quick overview of what's going on very easily. Um, it uses SSH authentication or a, a Python API-based authentication. So um, if you do uh, distributed SSH keys uh, in your infrastructure, it's really easy to integrate with. Uh, there's great uh, verbose debug and logging capabilities. And you can do uh, Jinja 2 configuration templating. Uh, so Jinja 2 is basically like a, a, a code language for template files. You take one file and override uh, the values of variables within those configurations. So, and there's, and there's a lot more features. Those are the, some of the most favorite features that I, that I like. Um, so some of the modules that I used in the, in the deployment that I'm gonna use are the template module, which is for doing configuration template deploys, uh, a service module, which is used to uh, manage any kind of uh, Unix service that's running on a box. Um, then I use a file and copy, which will create files and copy files. I use git URL, which is equivalent to something like wget uh, or curl-o. Um, I use the package manager module for CentOS. Um, all my demo, by the way, is on CentOS, uh, CentOS 7. And I use pip and URI, which is, uh, URI is the Python HTTP library module for Ansible. Um, and I use that um, to interact with the Nginx Plus API in my, my playbook. So this is the directory tree. I don't know if you guys can see that well, but um, basically it looks like a lot of files. Uh, the, the cool thing about Ansible is you can kind of keep a really good organi organized deployment um, in like a hierarchy fa fashion. So you're actually looking at two deploys. Uh, one, I'm gonna deploy Nginx as a load balancer, and then the other one, I'm gonna deploy Nginx as a web server. I actually have um, four DigitalOcean droplets. One is the load balancer, three are web servers. So I'll spin up and uh, deploy Nginx Plus, send the configuration files over, and then I will spin up web servers and then dynamically add those to the load balancer uh, with the API. Uh, and by the way, the, this demo that I'm going to be doing is on uh, GitHub. So if you guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the location to get the slide later. So if you guys want to grab the slides and kind of play around with it a little bit. Ansible is very, very easy to set up. So 
Um, you guys can probably simulate this with uh, doing digital ocean droplets or you know some uh, AWS instances. So let's see here. So just to kind of show you guys, so these are my digital ocean droplets. Um, uh, I got a load balancer uh, that I named Nginx plus LB1. Uh, WS1, which is the web server one, web server two, web server three. So what I'm gonna do is just rebuild these. Uh, I'm just gonna assume that the only thing that is on them is the SSH keys that I've, I've uh, deployed when I actually spun these up. Uh, so I'm basically reset the, resetting them, taking them back. So here, as you can see, web page is not available. This is my load balancer. Um, I have the IP right here. So the page I'm actually loading here is uh, the Nginx Plus status dashboard, which I'm sure you guys have seen. Uh, it's probably been all over the place. You've, you've seen it in some of the demos uh, throughout the week. Um, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go through some of the configuration files so you can kind of see a little bit of, about how they work. So in my Ansible demo directory here, if I do a tree, same thing I showed you earlier. Um, there's actually two folders, uh, one's for the load balancer, one's for the web server. Um, I do some things, as you can see, I, I have a templates directory and a task directory for each deploy. Uh, and the tasks, you would put tasks that you want to do. So a lot of these are going to be similar. Obviously, to install Nginx Plus is going to be the same on the load balancer as it is on the web server. But the, uh, the configuration files, maybe they're going to be different. So let's take a look at first uh, the uh, load balancer configuration. So the initial deploy YAML file, and I'm sorry if this is hard to read, but it's very, very basic. It just basically tells um, Ansible what set of hosts do you want to deploy to. Um, and then it also, you can designate a variables file that you can store variables in for that deploy. And then you, you just do includes for the actual sub deploys that you want to do. So in this case, um, I'm telling it to any server that is flagged in the Ansible inventory as Nginx plus LB, deploy the, these configurations uh, install Nginx Plus first, and then uh, do the copy of configurations. So we can take a look at those files real quick. So if I go into tasks here, and go into install Nginx Plus, uh, this is fairly simple. It's basically, uh, each group is, uh, uh, a, so it's obviously it's a YAML format, um, and each group and each section is a specific module that's being used. So. First instance, I'm using uh, Nginx, or I'm using the file module uh, to basically create a directory. Uh, and then I'm giving it a certain uh, permissions. And then I'm actually copying the certificate um, from my Ansible server for, um, so Nginx Plus is a, is a commercial version. And in order to get access to it, you have to have a cert and a key that's provided, provided to you during this, uh, your subscription period. So in order to install uh, Nginx on the local uh, uh, DigitalOcean droplets, I need to actually copy that cert and that key so that uh, it has permissions to access the repo. So first I copy those files over and then I uh, download the Nginx CA certificate from the, our, our repository and I also download the Nginx plus 7 repo which basically just tells um, CentOS where to go out and grab Nginx Plus when I, when I actually want to do the yum install. So then I do uh, yum install basically using a yum, mod, yum module here, uh, Nginx Plus latest, so that'll always grab the latest version. And then I just do a stop and start. Um, you can do a restart here. You don't have to do a stop start. So I actually could have put this in uh, two separate lines, but I wanted to show you guys that you can, you can do a stop and you can do a start or you can do a restart. So that, that was just to install Nginx Plus. Uh, then I'm going to actually uh, copy the configuration files. Um, this one's fairly simple. It's just basically grabbing uh, the default configuration file, which is um, the server blocks for my Nginx deploy, and then uh, the Nginx configuration file, which is uh, you know obviously for Nginx, and um, I have some stuff in there related to health checks. And actually, uh, and then here you'll notice I do a reload of Nginx after I copy those files, right? So if I go into templates, um, you can see I have a Etsy. So for the load balancer deploy, um, there's no custom HTML or anything like that because I'm only using it as a load balancer. So what I've done is um, basically just put the configuration files in here. Um, some things I've added to this specific configuration is I have health checking 
enabled, uh, which is a, an advanced um, feature of Nginx Plus to do active health checking. So I'm actually checking for a, a specific 200 OK, and the words, uh, or the regular expression match of Nginx exclamation mark. So if it doesn't find that, it's not gonna mark it as a healthy server. And then the, uh, sorry, the Nginx comp D, the default configuration file, is basically uh, two server blocks. Um, I'm listening on port 9000 for the, the status dashboard, which is what is here, which is not obviously up yet. And then I'm listening on port 80, which is my load balanced application. And uh, I'm doing a health check on the upstreams. I'm also doing, uh, I'm using sub filter to grab the upstream address um, and assign that and print that into the HTML, which I'll show you. So what we can do is we can actually start this deploy. So what I'll do, so um, I'm, I'm doing my deploy as root. Um, you have the ability in the config, deploy configuration to actually just use sudo. So there's two different ways you can do it. For the sake of demonstration, I'm just gonna use sudo. So uh, the command to actually do um, a deploy is ansible-playbook. And then you just do the uh, path to the actual playbook file. So I'm gonna do the load balancer first. And the, the, the deploy YAML, which is like the basic deploy configuration file, is gonna automatically know um, to include those other subtasks. So this is deploying now. So uh, as you can see, the first step that it does is it does something called gathering facts. Um, Ansible goes out and actually uh, does like an inventory uh, on the server and it grabs a bunch of variables and it assigns those variables for you so that you can use those. Uh, things like IP addresses, um, NIC configurations, um, all sorts of various things. Uh, so those, those variables are actually available to you um, using a tool, which I'll actually show you real quick. You use uh, Python, sorry. So you do um, ansible-m setup. And then this is, this is an example of what you get back when you do a setup on that server. It tells you all the variables and you can use those in your playbooks as well. I'm gonna show you how we do that in the next deploy. But anyways, my deploy finished, so now we can load this up and take a look. Nginx now is deployed as a load balancer. Now, We'll notice here, uh, if you haven't seen this demo page, uh, this is, or I should say the status page, um, usually there's some more tabs. Um, and because I don't have any upstream servers right now, I'm just using it as a load balancer, there is no upstreams. So essentially what I wanna do, um, I have my server zones uh, designated here, which tells me um, how much traffic is coming through my dashboard, and then I have another one that tells me how much is actually going to my back end, but there's no servers. so. That being said, uh, I'm gonna basically do, this, do the same deploy, but this time I'm gonna do it for the web server deploy. And uh, something to note, I, I, I just realized I didn't really go over this. Um, the uh, Ansible inventory, so how did it know what, what IPs to use? Um, so Etsy Ansible hosts is basically your inventory. So in, inside that inventory, um, you have, you separate all of your IPs based on uh, what your inventory is. And so for LB, that was only one IP that it deployed to. For web servers, I have three, right? So it's actually gonna run this same deploy, but it's gonna run it, on, run it times three. So let's do that. So it's basically the same command, but I'm just doing the web servers this time. Fairly simple. Oh, actually, you know what? Uh, what I do also wanna show you is the verbose so if you do dash VV, VV, which is like the max of verbose logging, it'll actually give you a, a lot of data about what's going on. And it's very useful uh, for troubleshooting issues or just, just doing general logging for your deploy. Uh, if you do a setup automation, you can do a full verbose log and get all that information and make it available in, in Elk or Splunk or something like that. So you can quickly figure out if something, something went wrong with your continuous delivery. So yeah, so this is running. Um, I guess while this is running, does anyone have any questions so far? Any, anyone have any, any questions about what you've seen? 
No? Anyone? I'm, I'm sorry, can you speak up? Yeah, for, so I, uh, and I actually, so I do want to say that this is a real basic playbook. It's really just to kind of show some of the basic things. Like he said, uh, you can do uh, special handlers or triggers that um, let Nginx know, did, 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 it, did something actually get copied where I actually need to do a reload? You can do that. Good, good point. So now the, demo is, the deploy is done, and if we refresh here now, we'll have uh, three servers that were automatically added uh, to the back end via the API. So if I, previously, this server was listening on port 80, now if I actually reload it, then it's actually working. So I'm load balancing between three servers. So, um, so one thing about um, Ansible is, that I like is that the documentation is, is really, really good. Um, so if you do have questions or you want to know uh, how to do something or what module you need to do, need to use, you can go on docs.ansible.com. Uh, it's very thorough. Uh, there's a lot of good examples on how people are using Ansible. Um, you know, there's some, uh, some pretty good information there. If you have questions about Nginx Plus or Nginx, uh, these are the, the links to the docs and the admin guide. And after that, that's about it. Um, if you guys save this, this is my slide share. Uh, I'll have this slide available. So if you guys want to look at anything, and then there, I'll also tweet that out on my Twitter. So uh, does anyone have any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, you would, uh, that, I guess it would come down to managing the uh, Ansible host file in a, in a matter, right? So you would want to generate based on like service discovery, uh, generate your Ansible hosts. Uh, so the question was is how, how could you do it more dynamically where you don't know the IP addresses and you want to be able to manage it that way? Um, so you, you, could, you could basically uh, do a service discovery and then create a host file um, on the fly. Um, Something else too, let me show you real quick too. Uh, what, I, what I was saying about the, um, the actual variables that you get back, uh, you can get the IP address from here, but you still would need to, yeah, you would need to manage that on the, obviously on the Ansible server, right? Any other questions at all? No? Is it, by the way, I'm just curious, how many people are using Ansible uh, in their stack? Awesome, great. Cool. All right, cool. Uh, well, I guess um, I'll bring up, um, I don't know if we, do you need a break? Like a couple like minutes? Okay, so we're gonna swap over and then uh, the NGX, some of the NGX people are gonna talk now. Thank you.